Hello guys, and happy Friday. Happy rainy, dreary, miserable Friday. <laughs> miserable weather day Friday. Today we're going to make a tarale. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever had tarale, but it is um, an Italian wine cracker or biscuit. And um, you can eat them with cheese or you can dunk them in your wine and eat them that way. But they're, they've always been one of my favorite things. So we're going to make them today. And they have very few ingredients. Just a beautiful thing. You're going to need two cups. Uh, well, I'm having halving the recipe. You can double this recipe if you want to, if you want to make more. So we're going to use all-purpose flour. We're going to use some salt. We're going to use extra virgin olive oil. We're going to use white wine. We're going to use fennel seeds. Okay, that is all. That's all you need. So um, what you want to do first, and I'll tell you the measurements as we add them to the flour. What you want to do first is get a big pot of, of uh, water on the stove boiling. Get it started, started to boil. Okay. I don't know what I'm saying here. <laughs> As if you were making pasta or something, okay? All right. In here, we have two cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add half a, half a cup of white wine. I'm using Pinot Grigio from Venice. And we want a quarter of a cup olive oil and a teaspoon of salt all right you're not going to add your fennel seeds yet remember these little um these great little shot glasses i found in the thrift a while back that looked just like a camera lens very very cute using those for my salt and fennel seeds today all right, with clean hands, you're going to go in and start mixing. By the way, this um, particular tarale recipe comes from the great, great Pasquale Sharapa, um, Mr. Orsara recipes himself. He's one of my favorites, one of my all-time favorites. And like he says, you got to put a lot of muscle into this. <laughs> but he likes to do it by hand because he likes to feel his dough, which is good. And I remember my grandmother always mixed everything with her hands, never with a mixer. So... that it could take a while to get this all blended in. And when you're almost all blended, in fact, I'm going to put a tiny bit more, drip more of the oil that was in the bottom of the And a little more of that, whatever was left in the wine thing. Okay, when you get to about this point, almost all mixed, you're going to add your fennel seeds. And that is a half a tablespoon right there. It smells amazing. Nothing smells like fennel seeds. Trying not to hit the tripod here, guys. So I hope you're having a beautiful week. I had a pretty good week. It was not a bad week at all. And uh, we're still working like crazy. Getting all that testing, testing done. And uh, 
keeping people safe and I'll talk to you about it later when we have our chat and um, I'll tell you some, some other things later when we get there all right I'm gonna turn this out onto the board now so I can mix it better so I can get it kneaded and Pasquale tells us to knead it for about 10 minutes Now, kneading isn't difficult, but it's it's not, you know, but it's time consuming. And like I said, you do got to put some muscle in because we want a smooth dough. I can feel the fennel seeds poking through. So we want to keep picking up the fennel seeds and working them in. Okay. I think it looks pretty good. Now, something you want to do. Uh, okay. Now you're going to cut, cut a piece off your dough. Put the rest of the dough on a plate and cover it with a bowl to keep it from drying out, okay? Now, First, we gotta shape them. Okay, now you're going to roll these out into a like we did with the Easter bread. Just roll them out. You don't need to flour your board with this because you have your uh, oil in there and everything. Okay, when you have it rolled into a little, this is not easy to roll. This is not as easy to roll as the uh, Easter bread dough. So what you're going to do is make a little circle. Watch me. You're going to make a little circle, overlap it, push it down, and cut it off. And there's your first tarala. And then you keep going. And make sure that you press them together really well because you don't want them coming apart uh, in the boil okay so this is what you want them to look like get some more dough So I'll keep rolling these out. I'll keep shaping these, creating these, and I'll come back when I have some done, and I'll show you what to do next after you shape your tarale. Okay, guys, you want a rapidly boiling pot of water, and into that you're going to drop your tarale. You want about maybe 10 or 12 at a time. You don't want to overcrowd your pot, and you 
want to actually move them around a little bit, make sure they don't stick to the sides or each other. And then what's going to happen is one by one the tarale will start to rise to the top of the water and that's when they're done. Just like a ravioli or a pierogi, they come to the top of the water, that's when you scoop them out and put them on a towel to dry a little bit. Meanwhile, they're going to preheat your oven to 400 and have that ready to go. So, we'll let our tarale go until they start to rise. Look, here comes one bobbing to the top. Look at that. A couple of them are starting to rise. So, look at that. Beautiful. They're starting to pop up now. So, we can take those out and put them on our towel. start to dry and then we'll do another batch see that guys awesome 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 these are absolutely one of my favorite things. They, uh, they are so delicious, and uh, they're kind of like a cross between a cracker and a biscuit. I would say more like a biscuit, almost kind of like a breadstick in a way. But the flavor in them is so delicious. And a lot of people uh, do dip them in wine, so have them with like. A red wine and dip them. Okay, next batch. Let's drop them in one by one. Darale go great with um, cheese, some beautiful provolone or uh, asiago or hunk of cheese, um, parmesan, any kind of cheese you like, and uh, they go great with cheese, and they also go great with beer, so just really good. Hear that, James? They go great with beer. <laughs> using my mopine over here to um, catch the drip as I bring it over to the towel. The mopine, that's what our grandmothers called these, these blue and white towels. Perfect thing to do on a rainy day during a quarantine cook, right? <laughs> so like I said, there's a two-step cooking process to these. We boil them first like this until they float and then we put them on a parchment lined baking sheet uh, and put them into the oven to bake for 40 minutes at 400 degrees so the thing that takes a long well kneading your dough takes a while because if you don't knead it enough it won't roll easily you won't be able to roll the um, the ropes easily so you have to knead it really really well until it's very smooth and you'll know when it's smooth enough because you'll be able to tell and um, that that's time consuming but the most time consuming thing was boiling this pot of water <laughs> because I started boiling the water when I started the video when I started making the tarali and I still had to wait a good 20 minutes for this thing to boil after they were all shaped and finished you know so um, I watched pot never boils as you know so I tried to ignore it, and I tried to do the dishes. <laughs> you know, I did some of the dishes, and uh, so 
that by then the water started to boil. So I find if you put a lid on it, it will boil a little bit faster. Something that you don't normally do when you're making pasta, but I do. Uh, I did put a lid on it like uh, Pasquale did, and we got it up to a nice boil. All right. Last batch is starting to rise here. Beautiful, look at that. Anybody else in there? I think that's good. Okay guys, so I'll take you over here and I'll show you what to do next. Okay guys. Here we have our drying on the towel darale that have been boiled. We're going to put them on this baking sheet on parchment paper. They're going to stick to your towel a little bit, but it's no big deal. It's only because they're sticky and wet. That's why you put them on a towel, a cloth towel, and not a paper towel, because you don't want paper sticking to them. I really, I really, really want to thank Pasquale for putting this recipe up because uh, we usually buy these in the Italian specialty store, but. Uh, Making homemade is even more fun. And if you don't know Pasquale, uh, you have to, you really should watch him. He's amazing. He's amazing, and he lives here in New Jersey also. So. So remember, a 400 degree oven, preheating for 40 minutes, okay? That's what's going to crisp, crisp them up and make them more like a, a cracker or biscuit. These are hard to describe, but they are really amazing. So there is our tanala ready for the oven. I'm going to put it in there now, and I'll show them to you after we take them out. And there they are, guys, out of the oven. They smell so good. The fennel seeds smell amazing. They're very, very hot, and you have to let these cool before you eat them. But they are just beautiful. They smell amazing. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you try it. And I hope you're having a magical, mystical, musical day. I love you all. I will talk to you very, very soon. Mwah.